You now have two state sets to cover the vault, but you still need to define more for the animated doors and arm. The security door will be the next step. Create a new state set and name it door. Set it active. As before, this takes you back to the original state defined by the original scene. Enable record mode on the new state set. Select the vault selection set and hide all its components since these have already been taken care of. Do the same with the arm selection set to hide the arm. Actually, there's one more object to hide and that's the blue plane used as a security screen. Plane objects in 3ds Max can translate into Adobe After Effects solids and this can be incredibly powerful. Later, you will use After Effects to replace the blue information by a texture that you control and animate in After Effects directly. Arguably, you could apply an animated material in 3ds Max. However, imagine that the design is not finalized yet, or that you may change it at a later time. Changing it in post means you won't need to re-render your scene every time you make a change. You'll learn more about this later, but for now, make sure the plane is hidden from view. Test render the scene. The glass is semi-transparent, although it's a little hard to see. Also, a separate pass gets rendered for self-illumination as you've set it up earlier. As you don't have any self-illumination areas on the door, you can disable that pass. You'll do that in a moment. First, consider that you need to add a different pass altogether to take care of the transparency of the glass. This way, you'll be able to control that transparency in post. The glass on the door is not a separate object to control via its own state set, but a better way is to use the glass material properties. Go to the Slate Material Editor and double-click the material called Glazing. It's a simple material with a light gray color and an opacity value of 15%. To render out this material as a separate render pass, you need to give it a Material ID. Right-click the Material node and choose Material ID Channel. Give it an ID other than 0, for example 3. Close the Material Editor when done. Go to the Render dialog and access the Render Elements tab. As mentioned previously, you don't need a render pass for self-illumination in this case, but you need one for transparency. So, instead of disabling render pass altogether, simply disable render passes at the self-illumination level. You still need a pass for transparency, so choose Add, select the Matte pass and click OK. You can define a mat by object or by material. You will obviously use material in this case. Lower in the panel, enable material ID and set the ID to 3 or whichever number you set up in the material editor. Test render the scene. In addition to the beauty pass, you get a black and white pass that separates the glazing from the rest. Again, you will use this information in post. Go back to the Common tab and set the output to Active Time Segment. Ensure the camera view is active and exit Record Mode. Before moving forward, you have to be mindful of a very important point discussed in the first movie. Whereas state sets record actions such as property changes, they do not in fact record a creation process. When you create a new object, material, or even define a render pass, that action is not recorded. So when you define a new render pass, as you just did for transparency, it is a global effect that spans over all state sets. However, you can certainly define whether or not a render pass is active within a state set. Activate the first state set you created named Vault. Enable Record Mode on it and take a look at the Render Elements tab. Render Elements is active, as this is where you set the self-illumination pass. However, now that you've created a new matte pass, it is also active at this level. Since you don't need the matte pass for this particular state set, you can disable it and then exit Record Mode. At the Vault AO level, 
It is less of an issue because elements active is disabled and render passes are blocked entirely. The bottom line is that you need to keep in mind revisiting state sets when you add new components to the scene. As long as you are just changing properties though, you should be safe. At this point, you can certainly create an ambient occlusion state set for the door only. In this particular example though, you can probably keep it simple and create one later that encompasses both the security door and the arm. So create a new state set and name it arm. This will represent the front end, the arm against the security door. Activate the new state set and enable record mode on it. Before you go any further, disable render passes on this state set. Hide the vault as you did before. Here, you may be tempted to hide the door as well, but you actually need it to collect shadows cast by the hand and arm. So in order to make the door invisible, but still use it to collect shadow information, you need to apply a shadow mat material to it. Select the security door selection set and go to the slate material editor. Drag a new matte shadow material into the view. Double click it to view its properties. Receive shadows is on by default, so go ahead and apply the material to the selection. The door and its components turn white in the viewport, but they become invisible at render time. Test render the scene around frame 160. The hand and arm seem like the only objects in the scene. However, enable alpha mode on the virtual frame buffer and notice the shadow information embedded there. Ultimately, you could extract the shadow information separately like you did with self-illumination and transparency, but this will do for now. Set the render output to the full sequence. Go back to frame 0, ensure the camera view is active and exit record mode. Finally, create one last state set named Arm Door AO. Activate it and enable record mode on it. Hide the vault's components. Select all other objects and apply the white material you created earlier. Set the camera view into realistic mode. In the render dialog, disable render passes. In the common tab, Set the render to Quicksilver as you did before. In the Render tab, set the rendering duration to 3 seconds. Lower, disable shadows and enable ambient occlusion. Set the intensity to 1.5 and the spread anywhere between 3 and 5. These last few steps are almost an exact copy of what you did earlier with the Vault's AO state set. Test render a frame around frame 160 to make sure all is working fine. In the common tab, set the rendering to the active sequence. Go back to frame 0, make sure the camera view is still active and exit record mode on the state set. Activate the state sets one by one to make sure all is working well. In the next movie, you set the render output paths to render state sets information to disk.